Welcome to Antiquity X. This is your host, Dr. Judd Burton. And on this inaugural episode, I'd like to read a passage from a fellow Texan, Robert Howard, from his Conan series. Between the years when the oceans drank Atlantis and the years of the rise of the sons of Arius, there was an age undreamed of when shining kingdoms lay spread across the world like blue mantles beneath the stars. Now, Antiquity X will deal with uh, questions uh, often dealing with the, the ancient past and the supernatural. Uh, and feel free to comment and, and ask questions on your own. Uh, but I've got uh, a lot of material, and today we're going to be uh, dealing with an interesting topic, which I'll get to in a moment. But as always, click a like, subscribe, and share. Uh, for future content and we'll get rolling on this and today's question has to do with uh, a debate uh, that's sort of been going around in the alternative uh, Christian research circle I guess you might say and it's this conflation of Nimrod and Santa Claus that is to say uh, the, the theory that's touted is that Santa Claus is simply another incarnation or avatar of the biblical Nimrod. Um, you can smack your head right now if you want to. Uh, there's really nothing to this, and I'm, I'm going to illustrate why this comparison is erroneous. Uh, there's some pretty, de pretty clear demonstrations of a poor understanding of the historical archaeological and anthropological context of, of these conclusions and uh, the, the clear presentism that's at the root uh, of the comparison that's being drawn in these circles. Not that I'm saying that Nimrod was a good person, but this comparison is, is not a good one. And if you'll take a look here at this particular um, particular, uh, this is actually the rendering of the uh, piece in question, it's uh, a one of the Mesopotamian Apkali, which you saw a, a drawing of in the previous side. Uh, the Apkali were these, uh, there were seven of them, and they were often referred to in Mesopotamian literature as the, um, uh, the seven sages. And this one in particular, you can see, is holding a, 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 a a deer and a, a, a plant of some kind in his hand. Now these would have been the equivalent of the Benachah Elohim in Genesis, uh, the sons of God, and in the apocryphal and Enochic literature, uh, the Egregory or the Watchers, the fallen angels. And the, the narrative is very much the same. They came down and they taught a mixture of occult sciences and practical sciences to humanity uh, for an exchange of uh, genetic access. Now the the Apkalu in question comes from uh, an archaeological site called Kala. And Kala is is important because it's one of the cities listed in Genesis chapter 10 uh, that the king Nimrod actually built. And this is a, a, an artist rendering of, of actually some of Henry Laird's archaeological work, uh, trying to put together what the city might have looked like in its heyday. But it was, in fact, an Assyrian city. Uh, the Bible's pretty clear about that, as is the archaeological record uh, on the history of Cali. But uh, when it was first discovered, or, or rediscovered, I should say, uh, it was called uh, Nimrud uh, because local lore had said for years uh, that this city uh, was Nimrod's capital. And it may have been uh, one of his capitals. It was certainly an important one. Uh, but the person who redubbed this city Nimrud, or called it Nimrud because he didn't have enough data, was uh, Carson Nebier. Nebier was a German explorer 
who set out on a, an expedition in the 18th century, the mid 18th century to the, the Middle East and surveyed a number of sites, uh, including Kala. Uh, but again, he, he was going off of local lore that this site was called uh, Nimrod. So he really didn't have a whole lot to go off of. It's not until the following century, the 19th century, during the infancy of archaeology, where you have archaeologists like Henry Laird and George Smith who actually uh, did this, the first serious excavations on the site and in, in fact recovered some of the, the inscriptions and translations and whatnot, uh, that we, we get a, a clearer picture of the identity of, of the city and that it's, it's not called Nimrud, uh, but is in fact uh, called Kala again, which you can look that up in Genesis chapter 10. All right, here is a, a typical Western rendering of Santa Claus looking holly and jolly. This is actually, I think, from Moore's uh, poem, and The Night Before Christmas. At any rate, I, I'm not here to support or, or dissuade you from believing in Santa Claus. It's really sort of beside the point, um, but uh, a lot of the, the comparisons that are drawn between this figure and the, the aforementioned uh, Apkalu uh, that was taken uh, from uh, the city of Kala uh, will bear out uh, in the next couple of slides uh, that they're, they're really not valid conclusions or, or comparisons. Now you can see Santa there uh, in, in typical Western fashion with his, his robe and his long beard. Uh, and of course there's a, a whole elaborate lore that, that grew up around him about uh, reindeer. Now consequently, there was actually a historical Saint Nicholas. And Nicholas was a, a, a bishop in Asia Minor. He was a bishop of Myra. And we actually know that he was in attendance at the Council of Nicaea uh, in the proceedings of the bishops, uh, that, that uh, first of several ecumenical councils called by the Emperor Constantine uh, in AD 325. Now, it may be that some of the comparisons between Nimrod and Santa Claus may begin here. I'm not sure. My suspicion is that uh, some of these researchers default to Da Vinci Code mode uh, and use the uh, inaccurate uh, historical conclusions of, of the author of, of that particular work and applying them to the, the sort of connective tissue that, that they think exists between Santa Claus and Nimrod. Uh, here again is a, a rendering of the a pencil drawing rendering of the aforementioned uh, Apkalu or Sage. And I want to draw your attention to some of the details that come out uh, in, in this alternative comparison, uh, which I'm trying to demonstrate here is erroneous. Now you can see that this Apkalu, he's a pretty big fellow because he's carrying a, a buck, a deer, under his arm. And in the other hand, he is holding uh, a, a plant of some kind. Uh, you can see that he has a long flowing uh, robe or kilt and he has a, a, a long beard as well. And so there are, are some of these superficial uh, characteristics which seem on the surface maybe there is something here. Maybe there is some sort of comparison that we can draw uh, with Santa Claus. Maybe maybe the Western Santa Claus is a, a kind of um, uh, modern uh, variant of Nimrod, but sorry, that's not the case. Uh, the deer under his arm is not a reindeer. In fact, it is a Persian fallow deer, uh, which has uh, occupies a region basically from Turkey all the way to uh, modern Iran uh, in the Middle East. They're, they're still there, but not in numbers that you found uh, in the ancient world. Uh, and consequently, uh, this doesn't even look like a reindeer. This looks more like the, the reindeer from uh, the old 
uh, claymation Rankin bass Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer uh, it, it's not an even an accurate comparison uh, morphologically or anatomically uh, to a reindeer so that comparison just sort of falls flat on its face uh, and of course the palm uh, the, the plant in his hand is a palm it's not a Christmas tree or, or any sort of uh, pine greenery now again that's not to say that that Nimrod was a laudable fellow uh, we know from the account in, in Genesis chapter 10 that he was anything but. He was really the first uh, a ruler of a, 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 an antique one-world government system. And uh, Genesis 10 sets up his kingdom in Shinar, sets him up as the ruler of that. And then in the following chapter, we get a look at the Tower of Babel, and uh, by proxy, we can we can infer that he was the architect of, of that particular mission. And the Tower of Babel probably looked more like this, uh, a ziggurat. Uh, and in fact, um, would have only housed the mechanism itself because the, the Babel, the word Babel means the gate of the gods. And you're looking at... at at Nimrod and his armies trying to st literally storm heaven so you can see why God got involved so here we are back to the picture from the British Museum of the Mesopotamian Apkalu from the site of Kala and the again the comparisons that are typically drawn between um, this Apkalu they, they first identify him as Nimrod which is erroneous, and the, the comparisons between this and Santa Claus really just fall flat on their face. And so uh, here's another, the rendering in pencil, and you can take a closer look at this for yourself. But uh, once again, um, this particular comparison only illustrates uh, a lack of, of understanding of historical, archaeological, and anthropological context, uh, and uh, presentism seems to be the, the big fault here. Well, there you have it. Uh, Nimrod is not Santa Claus. Now we'll follow this up with a study on Nimrod uh, in the next episode. But until then, stay tuned, click a like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you beyond the X. Godspeed.